meetings normally held municipal office are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access where required public participation provided in accordance with chapter 107 of the acts of 2022 which extend the governor's march 12 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open mean law master on law chapter 30a section 20 until march 31 2023 meetings are typically broadcast on frontier community access television and the link to this fabulous meeting can be found on the agenda on the town website Lily has been practicing her speed reading, in case you're all wondering. All right, great. Okay, select board, do you want to open your meeting? I will open the select board meeting at 6.33 p.m. Okay, great. And we're opening the meeting for CCI, and I'm just going to do a, um, a roll call here. So Jim Cambius. Here. You're here. Julie Chalfont. I know Julie has another meeting. I'm not sure if she'll be able to make it. Lily's here. Tim is here. Uh, let's see, Andrea Leaps in here. I'm here. here. Uh, Carolyn, you're here. Yep. MA, you're here. And Annalise here. Okay, so we're just missing a few people. All right, great. Thank you. Um, we're not going to read any minutes from the last meeting. Uh, let's see. I just want to remind everyone why we're meeting in case you've forgotten. <laughs> I'll introduce Luke. So we're meeting, this is Complete Neighborhoods. And basically it's two, we are one of six six towns in Western Massachusetts. I think there are five throughout the state at any rate. It's creating housing and underutilized and vacant properties near existing planned transit nodes, create and preserve inclusive neighborhoods by creating new housing, housing options for all income levels and support preservation of expiring affordability, uh, support housing production in the region by producing, providing technical assistance on planning pre-development and permitting, especially where municipal staff capacity is limited, target program resources to prepare projects for market feasibility, especially for small scale redevelopment opportunities, leverage work of existing coalitions for community engagement and education around affordable housing. So that's it in a nutshell. I'm gonna introduce um, Luke Mitchell is I think the team leader. Then we have Jennifer Nelson and okay, this is a tough one. Is it <laughs> Yai Hui? Is Jia that, is Wei. That? Jia, wait, say that again, please. Yao Wei. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. No okay. I'm sorry. I practice. <laughs> so <laughs> forgive me for not mis for okay. mispronouncing. Anyway, so I'll toss it, you know, hand it over to Luke. And then Luke, you can decide if you want people to wait till the end or ask questions during. Thank you, Denise. Um, I would really encourage, welcome and actually encourage you guys to jump in at any moment because really we're in the early stages of this project. Uh, and what we wanna do is learn and uncover as many nuances that we might not already know. Um, so if you see something in the presentation that inspires a thought about something else you think we should know, please uh, interject. Or if, or if we present something and it's not clear, just let, let us know and we can try to reframe it. Um, but so, yeah, and when we have some slides we can share. Uh, and Jenny, if you're able to share slides from your end, uh, yes. then we can, that will help. A little visual aid goes a long way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, look, look, just, just to interrupt slightly, I'm sorry. We did meet, Tim, Tim and I met with the group um, yes. on April 5th and we went around the campus and showed them the campus and, and talked about what we already know to date. So just so they are familiar with, with the campus. Yep, we've been we've been to the site and checked out all the buildings and, and thank you guys for that. Um, that was a great introduction and will help us hit the ground running. Um, so, and, and yeah, I think really in terms of what we can accomplish today, uh, maybe we should start before we jump into the slides. Each of us, each of the three of us, can introduce ourselves, get a little bit of background on us, um, and then if if we have time, I would love to for you guys to do the same and to, for us to learn a little bit about each of you, uh, you know, just briefly, and then you know what your connection is to the this prod this initiative, uh, and then maybe any what particular focus you might have in relation to it. Uh, that could sort of help us make those connections if, if that's okay with you guys. Um, so why, why don't we do that just real quick? And again, we can be quick. Um, so I'm Luke Mitchell. I'm um, 
a senior project manager with VHP, been with the company for five years, but been working in city planning and urban design for uh, about 20 years. Um, and I lead a lot of projects all around the state uh, of various capacities. We do comprehensive plans uh, for towns. We do housing studies, corridor studies, economic development planning. Um, so like I say, a, a wide variety, but we've been, we've been lately, we've been doing a lot of projects that are just like this, which are, Hey, we got this site and we have some ideas about what it could become. In some cases, they don't have ideas and others, uh, there's this pretty strong vision already baked in. Um, and so, so like I said, we've been doing a lot of this, which is, okay, what are the key constraints and opportunities on the site? Um, and that can be very technical, like, okay, where are the wetlands and how far back do you need to keep from the wetlands, for example? Uh, or it can be more about the market, like what, what type of development can a property in this location support relative to uh, the ever-changing dynamics of real estate market demand uh, and, and land use? Um, so, so yeah, that, that's, that's sort of my background in a, in a nutshell, but maybe I'll hand it over to Jenny, if you, if you can introduce yourself, Jenny. Yep. So I'm Jennifer Nelson. I'm an urban planner at BHB. I've been working here for about six months, um, but my primary focus is on urban sustainability. But right now I'm doing a lot of these um, MHP projects where I'm working with um, developing and conceptualizing multifamily housing in these areas. Um, so I do a lot of GIS work. I do a lot of the site due diligence where I'm examining some of the constraints on site. Um, I also went out and did the site visit with Luke um, and the town, and I am going to be involved with the um, community engagement components of this project as well. And I'll pass it off to Jawe. Hi, everyone. I'm Jawe. Uh, I am an environmental planner, um, and I've been with BHB for almost a year. Um, I have um, some experience in wetlands, um, and I currently I'm in the urban permitting team with VHB. Um, I'm also doing other some projects, um, like different levels, like local, state, and the federal levels, um, in different fields. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Joey, and, and maybe just if we could get sort of thirty seconds from each of you guys, we we, we really appreciate knowing uh, who each of you are. Yeah, uh, since I, can, I can't see the whole screen, just start off. Um, I'm Carolyn Ness. I'm a select board member uh, since the very beginning of the century. I've been a member of the Municipal um, Senior Housing Ad Hoc Committee since the last century, and we are bound and determined to get housing. Thank you. I can just call it, I'm looking at the... Um, how about Julie? Yeah, Julie. Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Julie Chelfont. I'm chair of the Finance Committee and Town Building Advisory Committee. Um, my background is mechanical engineering, marine engineering, naval architecture. Oh, very cool. Uh, maybe Anna Lee. Mm -hmm. Yes, Anna Lee. Um, I am the chair of our planning board, and although we're really in the early stages for a lot of this, I'm very interested in sort of overall um, issue, questions about how we might be able to put zoning in place that could uh, be a good foundation for whatever design is uh, settled upon. Okay, thanks, Annalie. Uh, uh, Andrea? Andrea? Andrea, I'm from the Midwest. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm a, plan, a planning board member and uh, serve on the open space committee. I've lived in Deerfield 30 plus years. I'm interested in housing because I have children in their 30s and where are they gonna live? And um, I'm especially interested in efficiency and figuring out how to do things in town that we can afford and that work. Thanks, Andrea. Um, James? I'm Jim Cambius. Um, I'm on the Board of Trustees of the Tilton Library, um, and I'm also a member of the Finance Committee. Um, and um, 
uh, when I'm not doing that, I'm a writer. Um, and I've lived in Deerfield about 20 years, I think, 23. I think we moved here in 2000. <clears throat> Great. Thanks, Jim. Um, uh, there's one that says MA's iPhone 2. That, that would be me. Uh, yes. I'm M.A. Swedland. Uh, I am on the Energy Committee and particularly interested in energy efficiency and climate change. Um, there's been talk of this being a net zero project, and uh, I'd hate to see all of that disappear because of financing uh, yep. limitations. Um, and uh, I've lived in Deerfield since 1974. However long that is, I don't know. I'm not old. I'm too old to count. <laughs> Thanks, M.A. Uh, was there anybody else? Next year's tomorrow. Next year, M.A. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Denise. I've I've lived here in in Deerfield for 32 years. I'm um, vice chair of the planning board, chair of CCI, and my background for the past you know, 20 years is really uh, business development, micro business, entrepreneurs, um, workforce development. Cool. And there's and there's me, Lily Dwight. I might be at the end of your your scroll. Um, I am the chair of the senior housing committee. I also serve on the community preservation committee and um, CCI. And my background is I worked for over twenty years as um, chief information officer in the field of aging, doing municipal. Uh, not municipal, but doing campuses where people, we had child care to hospice care, the entire human span on like one mm. campus. So, oh, cool. Yeah. That's great. And then Tim, I think Tim is like. Uh, yes, I'm Tim Hilchey. I met you folks uh, with Denise. Um, youngest select board member, well, I'm not youngest, but the, the least, <laughs> least number of years under my belt. Um, and I'm a retired journalist and uh, uh, studied electrical engineering. Um, and now I am in, interested in helping move the town forward with these, uh, this campus in particular. Thanks, Tim. Okay, so let's jump into the slides. Um, Jenny, if you go to the next slide. Um, so here's just a quick uh, preview of, of the slides. Uh, so we can give a project overview. Denise, you did a great job at doing that already, but um, we'll give a little color to that. Uh, it included among that is a, we have a schedule, a sort of graphic schedule on a slide. Uh, so we can just talk about um, our scope and some key milestones and dates and meetings and stuff like that. We've already gotten started scheduling some meetings, which is good. Um, and some that are further out in the future, we can we can wait. But um, but at, at any rate, we can walk you through the schedule. Uh, and then, so existing site conditions, we've begun uh, some preliminary online research. Uh, you know, the state has a lot of great um, GIS layers available publicly, so we've started to layer that up and just starting to look at the environmental uh, con constraints, stuff like that. Um, plans to date, we can sort of bounce back to you what, what we've heard from you guys. And then if, if, if anything sounds a little off, let us know, or if there's anything we're not capturing, please let us know that as well. Because I, as we understand it, there's been a lot of, of thought put into this already, which is, which is great. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're not sort of uh, missing anything so, so that we don't do it, go off in the wrong direction uh, or spend time inefficiently doing something that's already been done. Uh, and, and it would be great to confirm that the assumptions that we have right now are actually accurate about what you want to achieve in terms of the program. So the, you mentioned the sustainability, net zero goals, things, anything like that, that, you know, real goals for the project that have already been established. Uh, we, we, we'd love to really nail those down. So next is concept planning. You know, we can we haven't started this, of course, uh, but we can talk about our process for that. Uh, and then some zoning considerations. Uh, you know, somebody brought up zoning, uh, so we should we should <clears throat> talk a little bit about that um, and whether it, how much it, it impacts a publicly owned property. Um, and then maybe we'll we'll do a, a one month look ahead at the end. Um, Jenny, if you could 
advance the slide. Thank you. So overview again, Mass Housing Partnership uh, is funding the project that that's MHP. We we have a relatively new relationship with them, but we've quickly come to really appreciate this agency. Um, they are 100% committed to uh, the the great fight of trying to proliferate housing uh, and chip away at the at the lack of supply of housing, which is really affecting really the entire country, uh, but certainly Eastern Massachusetts, uh, when it comes to a limited supply, what you what you get is higher costs. And what we when we were sp speaking with Denise and Tim, uh, we really you know learned about the, an issue that's common to many towns in, in, in your region, which is that people want to, people are aging in place. They want to stay in town, not can't necessarily afford to keep up an old house, or they're in a house that's out of sync with their needs. It's three or four bedroom. Uh, look, it would be much more convenient living in a smaller unit, thousand square feet, something like that. Um, so we again, we've heard a, a, that similar issue in, in a lot of towns. So um, yeah, this slide deck will summarize in, in, in environmental conditions and zoning. I can think I, it's, I, um, Luke, can I just yeah. add another dimension to that that is uh, unique to the rural environment, I think, not just Deerfield, but rural. And that is that we have um, farmland here that the value of which is such that young farmers can't afford to buy it. Mm -hmm. And um, the farmers who live on it um, can't, don't have any place to go so to sell to the young farmers anyway. And so that one of the um, things that we would love to try and do with the senior housing is uh, trying to have this idea of, of have if the farmer agrees to APR, agriculturally preserve the land, dress, dropping the value of it. And then it, the idea would be makes it affordable for young farming families to move in. And maybe we give them some sort of a deal on the senior housing or something like that. But anyway, the, the point being that the farming is a really important um, business in the area and going to be more important than ever, I believe, and that this is a dimension of, of what we're trying mm. to achieve as well. That's really interesting. We can look into that on our end, look at some precedents of maybe where that might have happened before. Um, that that's, I grew up on a farm uh, in Maine and uh, boy, like that, the town I grew up in is very similar. It's tough to tough to make you know tough to make it pencil out with a farm, uh, and when land costs are so high, it, it's it's really a, a daunting challenge. So thank you for the, for, for mentioning that. Um, yeah, Jenny, if you could go to the next slide. Uh, so okay, CCI, you guys are CCI. So uh, thank you for doing what you do. We, you know, we we have a, a a pretty good understanding, I think, of who you are and and how you work. Um, so, you know, we, we look forward to continuing to work with you throughout the process, uh, and, and to make, again, make sure that we capture everything, all the great work you've already done. Um, all right, next slide. So here's a, a project schedule. Um, now it, so the site research we've already gotten started on the kickoff we did with Denise and Tim last week. Uh, tonight is is the, the next milestone, which is the CCI introduction meeting. Um, so we're, we, in our scope, we have three what we call stakeholder meetings. Uh, and typically, we don't decide who those stakeholder meetings are going to be with until we actually start speaking with the client and figuring out what's going to be the most useful in terms of the scope of work that we're undertaking. Um, so the idea we have now is to is for the three meetings and they're scattered throughout the schedule as you can see the first one to be with senior housing so lily i emailed you and, and we have something on the calendar i think it's for the 27th it is of April. yeah so looking forward to that to, and you know, and and by the way the reason we do these meetings is to just clear aside all all the other topics and just focus on one question so i think the question we can focus on that night uh or that afternoon when we speak will be about the, the program, you know, what's the desired program of development on, on, on the site, specifically the senior housing. We have a sense, uh, we heard a unit count of, of 35, maybe some somewhat larger units than you may typically see, but, you know, we um, 
let's have an open-ended discussion about it. We just want to make sure that we capture everything that you guys have already come up with for that. And then once we get into the concept planning phase, who knows, we, we all may be surprised at what the capacity of the site is or what it could host. Um, and what, not to get ahead of myself, but when we get into the concept planning, what we almost always do in a project like this is provide alternative development scenarios um, because it's it, it's it's the part we're at the part of the project design where you don't need to worry about the size of the pipe and how much water to bring in and, and you know we're not engineering anything so we can think big we're obviously very focused on constraints and we don't want to give you an option that's infeasible all the, all of the options will be feasible but uh, th there'll be a, a, a relatively simple level of articulation that will allow us to really explore optionality. So uh, that can be optionality in the actual program of the space. It can be optionality in how buildings are laid out. It could be optionality in the height of the buildings. So we, we'll, we'll work iter iteratively with, with, with you guys on all of that. So, so I know we have 30 minutes for that call, but let's make the best use of it we can. Um, in June, uh, is is what we're anticipating for the first public meeting. Uh, we Luke, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to talk about the research a little bit because senior sure. housing has retained the services of um, Berkshire Design, and they are doing a bunch of site research. And I just want to put that out there to be shared. I mean, this is it's for the whole campus. So um, yeah. I just want to make sure you all are aware of that and that and if we want to include that in the senior housing stakeholder meeting as well or let's why don't you email me and I will connect you with Rachel Loeffler who's been working with us on that and I will let that happen okay yeah well I think it would be great for if you could sort of clarify for us how we're how we can best dovetail with that group because it seems like there's a bit of scope overlap yes which is isn't necessarily a bad thing. It means we can strengthen each other's process, right? So um, let's let's talk about that because it would be great to understand okay. how it, whether we meet with them and share ideas um, or we work separately so that each of us comes up with unique uh, thought, so concepts. Why don't, why don't I mail? I can email you the yeah. the uh, proposal because it outlines all the tasks that we have retained them to do. And I'll, there are a few that we didn't, we did ourselves, but um, it's okay. the data for too. And so I'll email that to you and then we'll be in touch and we can, I can put together a meeting or something, whatever works. That sounds perfect. Okay. Good. And just, here's just a sort of high level question. How far along in, in their process are they? Are they just getting started? Are they closer to they, finished? They started last fall, but they had to wait on, till the spring unfortunately we're having this like crazy dry spring that that they were doing um finishing site delineation work they anticipated ending it in early spring but i don't i gotta get in touch with her i'm going to talk to her next week um because maybe they want to wait for it to rain because they are they are doing um soil wetlands. testings and wetlands delineation and i see and what we said was, look, we don't want this faked. We want we want this legit. We're not trying to force something to happen. We want to know it's really there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that that so that sounds like um, certainly information we we would want reflected in our diagrams. Uh, so that that's great. Um, yeah, let, let's have an offline conversation yep. about that. Uh, all right. So then we're also committed, in addition to the three stakeholder sessions, we're committed to two public meetings. Uh, and, and so the first one we're thinking of June, we we heard from Denise and Tim about a, a chicken barbecue uh, taking place, I believe, on that date. Mm -hmm. And uh, not knowing much about that event or any other <laughs> event in Deerfield, it struck us as a good, the timing felt right for us to to come to town, set up a booth, and just meet with people organically throughout the day, um, for uh, really for two reasons. The the two the two reasons there. One is when you do that, you can meet with people who might not regularly attend a a, a public meeting about a specific project, which is great because the point of public engagement is to connect with as many people as possible. 
Second, it's a lighter lift uh, if it, there's a pre-existing event. Uh, it, it saves time for, for us and for you in terms of getting a flyer out and booking a space and, 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 all, and all that. And so uh, if it makes, would be curious to hear your reaction to that though, us doing something in conjunction with that event. Uh, the only problem is that's up in old Deerfield and there's going to be a band and all that kind of stuff. And um, it's part mm -hmm. of our um, 350th celebration. I'm not really sure how productive it's going to be. Um, a lot of people are coming from out of town uh, to have their class reunions. So, although, I mean, I guess it would be fine. Um, how loud is the band going to be, Carolyn? I mean, it's going to be blasting so loud no one can hear themselves talk, which is really annoying. Hopefully not. I, I hope not. <laughs> I hope okay. Not. Um, I'm just not sure if that's really going to be productive, but um, I think a booth, well, it might be too early, but I was going to say a booth in the, uh, I, I mean, a table at town meeting. Yeah. Um, as people come to town meeting is maybe a good idea. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We, maybe we should talk about this offline or yeah. something. I, I don't think town meetings, yeah. No, no I, not. And yes, I think this is Andrea. I think that um, going from the 350th to the future is a good sell. So I like the idea of having a table then, but we can we can talk about yeah. this. Yeah. Okay, uh, Jim? I'm not sure how many townspeople actually be there. That's the only thing. I don't know. Um, Jim, the, can't, Jim has his hand up. The Founders Day uh, celebration, May 7th, I think. Isn't that right? Yeah, you're going to get younger people at that. And that's at the library. So, you know, between the library and the church. Which is the campus. Yeah. I think that might actually be a better fit. It's, I'm just looking at my calendar here one second. It's pretty soon. <laughs> It's, it's pretty soon. Yeah, I think we were hoping to have some time to meet with some stakeholders, get a sense of some of the biggest questions, but it's if the event it would be really ideal. Well, how about this? We, we can put some thought into it on, on our end too. We'll get back to you in a, in a couple of days. Uh, I know, I, I guess that's right around the corner in a, in a way, but, but you know, not really. That would give us a few weeks. Let's, uh, I'll send you an email, Denise, uh, and, and we'll let you know if, if it sounds like based on the, that description, it would be more suitable than the chicken barbecue. Okay. What, uh, what date is that again? What's the date, Carolyn? Or Jim, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's uh, May, it's the Saturday, May 7th. I believe it's May 7th. No, it's, it's May 6th. May, May 6th. 6th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. That's at the library and it's a little bit, um, I don't know. It would be, it would be more open to that kind of thing. I just think the chicken barbecue okay. is too focused and yeah. it does seem like mostly it's class reunions. Okay. All right. So how about this? Thanks. Why don't we wait to hear from you guys? If you want to put your heads together and let us know what your preference is, and then we'll let you know if, if it works for us. Okay. Okay. And then if, if need be, we can plan a meeting that's not connected to any event also. You know, we, we do that regularly, uh, and, we're, and we're happy to do that if, if nothing else works out. So at this point, we're, we're quite flexible, um, as, as long as it hap happens relatively early in the process, because, so here, here's the big idea for the two public meetings. The first public meeting will really be about Hey, how are you? And just asking people what what how, why this project matters to them. Are they aware of it? What sort of goals would they love to see tackled through this project? And really just do a lot of listening. Um, versus the second public meeting, which will come much further down at the line. At that point, we're going to have imagery of concepts, uh, and the plan there is to share those with the community and get feedback on, on the actual uh, concepts that we've come up with. Okay, um, I think M.A., you have your hand up. Yeah, um, I was wondering, the school, uh, the PTA usually has some sort of a late spring, like early June, late May event, and that would be a lot of parents. I don't know whether we can interfere with that, but that might be more the population you're looking for. 
I don't even know that it's going to exist, but they usually do. It's, it's called a fun fair. And yeah, so never mind, huh? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye. Fun. <laughs> All right, so that sounds good. We'll, we'll get something on the books. Okay. Uh, so then uh, in mid-June, we have a second stakeholder meeting. The idea was to meet with you all again. By that point, we will be further along and we can have a, a sort of more substantive discussion about specific questions we might have about programming, planning, engineering, goals, objectives, all that. Uh, and then when the summer is really getting going, July, August, we can take everything we've learned and start to conceptualize different uh, redevelopment alternatives for the site. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll be doing that in a 3D environment um, that really takes the entire site into consideration and parking and access and shared resources between these different buildings. I mean, it, the idea is to make it a municipal campus, right? So it'd be, it's beyond just how, much, uh, how many units of senior housing can you fit, but really let's make a, a let's give an internal consistency to the campus uh, so that these projects support one another programmatically, functionally, whatever. Um, third uh, stakeholder meeting, we're thinking, and it doesn't need to be in mid-July, that's flexible, but the idea there would be to meet with the Conservation Commission. Um, but I'm, I'm, something's telling me that this may change once we speak with you. Lily, about the, um, is, are they called Berks, Berkshire's um, scope? Berkshire don't want to do, yeah, yeah, yeah don't, don't, don't need to duplicate anything that they're going to be doing. If they're going to be developing a really clear understanding of uh, wetland related limitations, then we'll leave that to them and, and we'll focus on something else. Um, so towards the end, renderings and urban, so to the point where we're, we're comfortable with some concepts, then we'll focus on um, visualizing them through finished renderings, which you can use, I, I think will be useful, not only internally in town to communicate the idea, but also externally, when you're looking for grants, okay, how can we make this project work uh, through state grants, federal grants, um, those renderings like that can really be helpful to explain in a accessible way what the, what the concept is. So um, the second public meeting will take place sometime during the, the, those uh, those couple of months. And then we can give a final presentation in September. Oh, and then the last thing I, oh, I should, well, there's two more things I should, I should mention. We had spoken when we were scoping the project out about uh, preparing a list of urban design principles. Uh, that to me was a, a great request. We don't often get that one. But we do work on on doing just that for, you know, we just worked on the city of Portland, Maine's uh, urban design guidelines. Um, so so that that's a great one. And we can talk more closer to the date about, OK, it's great to have a concept. But what are the principles for placemaking, streetscape, you know, parking standards, lighting, uh, materiality in the buildings and the facades and the fenestration? You can go to a relatively, uh, you know, high level of detail with or with urban design principles. Um, you don't want to go so far that you limit the creativity of architects that you ultimately hire. But at, at any rate, speak about that more closely when we get to it. Uh, and then, lastly, is an implementation matrix. Uh, I think when you, a few of you were were introducing yourselves, you spoke about that back end, perhaps zoning changes, things like that. Uh, so we can work with you and maybe that would be a great thing to partner with Berkshire on, you know, given their understanding of the engineering and the constraints, we can work with them on what, what actually needs to be done to, to move the project forward. Um, um any, so, yeah, go ahead. Who yeah. is, um, maybe I'm jumping the gun, but I, are you at the early September final presentation part, right? Because who is that? I'm wondering who that is to, is that another public meeting? Uh, we were planning to present it to you, to the CCI, um, but I think we can revisit that as we get closer. Um, you know, we have a scope and fee, but we're if it, as long as the, the, there's remaining budget to support something like that, we, we could we can we're definitely open to that. Okay, Julie, if your hand up. Thank you super quick. Um, I'm going to have to leave and I'm very sorry because this is really interesting, but um, I assume that 
the senior center or board of oversight is on your um, list of people to talk to at some point. And then my other question is whether you're concentrating primarily on sort of external or are you looking at building usage also? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, uh, the answer to your first question is neither of them are on our radar yet. So I'm so glad you said that. Uh, we'll write that down. It, it, was it the senior center and sorry, who? And the board of oversight for the senior center. So either oh, the senior oversight. center director or the board of oversight. That, that, that sounds like a really uh, good conversation to have. So we'll, uh, Denise, we, we maybe we'll be in touch with you about scheduling that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That'll, that'll be an interesting conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, and then your second question was about extra. Well, well, yes, certainly. No, we're we're very interested in the, what, what what what's going on inside the building, and what so if it's for example in relation to the senior housing, what do these units look like? Are they one? Are they studios? One bedroom? Two bedroom? Uh, that will there be amenities? And by, by the way, the, obviously the preference is yes, there will be amenities. Um, so we'll have we'll have a space space program for the building um, that that um, specifies specifically in square feet uh, how much space will be allotted for for each of the program elements. <laughs> uh, and again, we're you know caveat we're not architects. Uh, we we do concept plan. We're urban designers and concept planners. We know enough to provide a, a relatively convincing image of a building, and and through the modeling process, we know how many square feet it would be able to accommodate. Um, when it comes to a, a greater level of uh, stamped drawings, you know that that's we jump off the bus at, at, after that. Um, so so great that Berkshire is involved, and maybe we, we can uh, involve them in in some of that as well. Um, so yeah, Jen, if you if you could advance the slide, uh, and then Jenny, do you would you mind walking through these slides? Yes, yeah, I can do that. Thank you. So this is actually from the town's GIS system. Um, so I just calculated the area of the parcels, and I kind of delineated which parcels exactly we're looking at. Um, so this bold red line delineates all of the parcels that we're looking at specifically for this project, but we are informed by Denise and Tim during our kickoff with them that a section of this parcel may also be included in our project scope. So um, we ended up going back through our graphics and doing some secondary analysis with this parcel in mind, just so that when we provide you some concepts, as Luke said, one of these concepts could be including this parcel and what could possibly go there um, in terms of land use, in terms of pathways and accessibility, um, et cetera. So uh, if we could pause I, there, if we could pause there, yeah. if anybody has thoughts on that, would we be curious to hear it? Uh, so Lily, so, yeah, um, I am um, in the process of uh, finding a commercial appraiser our understanding is that the current property owner does not want to peel off that piece, but wants to also include the parsonage. So it would push it all the way back to the end boundary. Um, the original par parcel line? Yeah, the here. full parcel line, yeah, line. exactly. Um, which is pretty exciting. But we are constrained um, by the appraisal, appraisal value and the um, CPC funds that we have uh, to find out what, I don't think, I don't know, but I'm gonna get an appraisal value hopefully in the next two weeks. So, and then work with the select board and find out if um, there's a way to make up the difference or maybe there'll be no difference. I don't know, but I just wanted to let you know that it looks like they, they wanna do the entire parcel and we are, um, they're interested and we're trying to get an appraisal. Right. Okay. Um, Tim has his hand up. Yeah, I wanted, yeah, I was just about that parcel. I, I was going to say that Lily had better information than any of us. And um, also we want you to be in touch with the library architect as well, because they already have some mass, you know, 
designs, we should shortly have renderings, 3D renderings of the building that they're proposing. So that'll work into your presentation as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Now okay. I remember the okay. thing, uh, I got sidetracked when Lily was talking about appraisers. This last line in here um, about the, the library being owned by the trustees is a sore point in town. And I just want you to be aware that okay. uh, the library is owned by the town. Okay, okay. That's good. I'll change that wording. And, and also any thoughts you guys have on how those back parcels would be used would be welcome. But no, don't, yeah, they, not to put everybody on the spot. But what, yeah, but I mean, it is a lot of pavement right now, which is kind of interesting. Um, and so possibly could be parking for campus, but the thought was to, um, possibly put the senior housing back there because when we first began talking about this, we were talking about tearing down the existing town hall and building senior housing sort of there and then in an L shape and might even impact the ball field. We weren't certain, but by purchasing this property and putting senior housing there, we decouple the senior housing project from what has to happen with town hall. And so yeah. we're not constrained by their deadlines also frees up the town hall and that space to be reimagined. So those are the things we've been talking about. Again, nothing is set in stone, but for senior housing to be decoupled from yes. the other projects would be nice because as Carolyn mentioned, we've been working on this since the last century and I'd like to do it before I die. Well, the other the other good thing about sharing options with you at the end of the process is that if you have questions that can't be answered within the time frame of our project, that's okay. We can give you two options, and if it falls that you, if it lands on yes, you can get access to that land, you already have an option for it, and if it falls in on that you can't access that land, you have an option for that too. Right. Um, so maybe so maybe that that's where the not to jump the gun, but maybe that's where the um, that's the independent variable here is the location of the senior housing. In one concept, it could be where the town hall is now. It, to your point, in the other option, it could be back there, which and then we could we could explore what could be done with the land under the town hall. Uh, um, okay, sorry. Go ahead, Jenny. Unless anybody else had uh, had anything. Okay. This is just as part of our scope, we wanted to assess um, the roadways and access to these parcels. Um, I understand that there is some pavement here, uh, as Lily just pointed out. So we'd have to kind of, you know, take that into consideration. Now that now I know that that might be, we might have the full parcel, we can do some more analysis on that. Um, but I just mapped out the basic entrances to the library, um, to the church, to the the old town hall building, the 1888 building, um, and to this, the municipal offices and the police station here. And then we did get a basic map of the utilities in the area. So um, Eversource um, Energy Electric uh, Comcast is available. And then we have the pipelines for the stormwater, sewer, and water along um the surrounding north main street and conway street here so for the topography we found that the site is relatively flat um, it's hovering around like the 205 foot elevation mark um, as you can see here down towards like the where it turns green that's where the um it's kind of going down towards the bloody brook there and when we went out for our site visit, we were able to actually see and take pictures for ourselves um, that area where the slope, where the ground slopes down towards the bloody brook um, for an elevation change of about 15 feet. So this is the hydrology of the site. So the bloody brook is the 
main constraining factor just because it is a perennial stream. Um, according to the USGS survey, uh, there would have to be a 200 foot buffer from the Bloody Brook in which you'd have to get a permit from the Conservation Commission. Uh, there's also a couple of wetlands um, outlined in green, and then these are the 100 foot buffers from the wetlands that we'd have to consider. And again, since you're already in the 200 foot buffer from the stream, you'd have to get permission from the Conservation Commission to go within the wetlands boundaries as well. And we and we can leave these as a placeholder until we get Berkshire's uh, findings. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah. But th but this is I think obviously of all the constraints we're talking about, this is probably the most impactful to the site design. So if you know if we could be part if if Berkshire will be meeting with Concom, we would love to be a part of that conversation uh, because every town's Concom is very operates very differently. Uh, and we would just love to hear what the what what realistically would be required of the project if building was proposed within the either of these buffer zones. Absolutely. So next we do have um, we have a slide on environmental justice communities just because this would um, impact the development if MEPA was triggered. Um, but there are no environmental justice communities in Deerfield, which is good to know. So now we're heading into the plans to date section, which we got a lot of this information from Denise and Tim when we were um, there for our site visit and kickoff. So these are just highlighting the, um, the buildings within the parcels that we were looking at. So this is just a slide of the original parcels, the original four parcels that we were looking at with the four buildings within those parcels. Um, so obviously the police department and municipal offices are A, then there's the 1888 building, um, the South Deerfield Congregational Church, and then the Tilton Library. And we've noted that each of those kind of have some plans in the works, or at least there's some discussion or ideas being tossed around for each of those properties. So for the police department and municipal offices, there is a an idea to move the municipal offices and attach in a, into an addition off of building B, which is the 1888 building on the corner. Um, and if that happens, the current offices may be demolished. And that was an idea for a potential place for the senior housing to go. Um, and there we were talking a little bit about for our urban design guidelines what the feelings were towards the exterior of the police department. And we were informed that it's, it's kind of, eh, you know, it's not, it's not the, the shiny star in town. Um, so there could be some work on our end to kind of reimagine what the exteriors of these buildings could look like. And it's, progress to date is just that there's high level ideas, but there hasn't been anything definitively planned at the moment. And so again, feel free to like interrupt. Yeah, if I can just jump in here. Yeah. So one question, which is, I want to make sure we have this right. Is the idea to take this whole building offline or just the part of it that houses the town hall? The police That's station the, remains? Yes, because they are they're technically two separate buildings. They just have an annex that connects them, but they function separately as far as I know. I see separately. So and when we walked in the door, police on the right, uh, mm -hmm. town hall on the left. OK, yeah, gotcha. OK, thanks. Um. I do have Jim. a question yeah. um, about external design. I know that one of the strong desires of I think most of us is for you know historic preservation and to try to preserve the exterior of uh, at least the three buildings along Main Street. Yeah. I don't think anybody really cares that much about the town offices. <laughs> but the three buildings along Main Street, there's been a lot of concern about preserving the exterior appearance. Um, the library expansion design, you know, put a lot of effort into making the new addition harmonious with the existing structure. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. So, yeah, and that gels with what we That's observed right. on site. Um, okay, so Jenny, you want to keep moving? Yep. 
So next we have this corner building um, built in 1888. So we're thinking, or um, one of the ideas was to uh, update this building and expand it to contain the municipal offices. Um, and there's some preliminary designs that we got from Tim um, that we just included in here just for our knowledge so that we know moving forward that there's kind of, there's been some conversations of the design um, and what the structure might include and contain and what it could look like. Um, so we can obviously update those as needed if more information becomes available and as things kind of move forward with these other projects going on at the same time as our project. And then we have the South Deerfield Congregational Church. Um, so the desire is to convert the building potentially into a senior center and community space bundled together um, with a function room, which could perhaps be the sanctuary now. I understand that there's some studies going on to assess the structure and um, you know, the safety, the health impacts of how it is in its current condition, um, but there's no uh, concrete designs in place for this. So this is something that we could explore in our concepts of what it might be like to have some of the senior units on the end of this building. Um, if you want to split up the two senior housing buildings, you could have some units off of the congregational church and others in an independent residential only building. Um, so we do know that the town applied for a mass development grant and there is a desire to potentially add some solar panels or really bring up the efficiency of this building. So this is another thing that we're just gonna keep in our minds while we move forward with this, this project. And then we have the Tilton Library. So as Tim mentioned, um, we he sent us over the plans for the expansion off of the back of this, uh, off the back of this building. Um, so when we go in and do our concept modeling, since we have these ground floor plans, we can incorporate these into our concepts to kind of show what this campus could look like even just like a year from now. Um, James, I see your hand up. You're muted. I do just want to point out something that you may not be aware of when you had the map showing the access points. Um, as I understand it, the new library design will move the parking lot south, uh, basically moving it over towards the um, onto the front of the church tract. So okay. Oh, okay. Oh, great. Yeah, library access will be it's I think it's on one of the uh, the sketch plans here. Okay. Yeah, we, we can model that out as a future it's, condition. Be aware of that. Will it be right across the street from what is that brave the road uh, Braybury or Brave? Yeah, Brayburn. Brayburn. Good question to which I do not know the answer. Okay. Hopefully. Uh it's it's right. It's uh it creates an intersection. Okay, cool. That's good uh, to know. I'm pretty sure, Jim, I, I'm pretty sure that all of the parking stays within the existing Tilton Library lot. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's 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 close to the, the church property line, but I think one of the advantages of canting the building like they did was it allowed them to make a more usable, um, and unfortunately, I just didn't have that slide. I wish I had I'd been able to share it with you. Okay, we can get it though. Well, Tim, just to add on to that, it leaves it leaves a lot more open space behind the library because they do access that a lot. There, there are two you know large trees that I think we showed you. Hopefully, they'll both stay. I don't know, but yeah, Jim is right to the south. That's where the parking lot will be. And according to the library, they need to have twenty seven spaces for the library. So that's sort of that's sort of set in stone at this point because. Um, that's going to start October of 2023. The construction will begin. So that will be finished before, probably before any of the, these other projects. Mm -hmm. Awesome. 
And then this is just a slide on the potential expansion and what building exists there, which is the St. James Roman Catholic Church. I know it's owned by a private owner, which we were just talking about earlier in this presentation. Um, so I guess we can disregard this slide for now because I was just going off of the old information that we might only acquire half the parcel, but I can update this so that we can assess what it might be like for the whole parcel um, because that would definitely substantially increase the lot um, square footage. So, and so the, building, the building to the right of the, the Catholic Church, it is the rectory, is that right? Yes, the parcel, oh, okay. yeah. Okay which is vacant like the church no that is occupied i believe oh yes okay. it is occupied okay and the church i think could be said to be derelict right tim i think so yeah um it's actually in better shape than um than our church than the really? white church yeah. oh uh-oh all right no. no it isn't carolyn Oh, well, that's what Chris Harris said. He he had someone go through it. Structurally Chris Harris estimated that it would cost about $3 million to make it safe. Wow. So um, I I, there's know, I differing opinions that. on that. Let's just put it that way. All right. That's your, well, you're safe. I know, whatever. And we're not going to worry about it. <laughs> yeah. I, do have his, I do have his reports from the... Um, that he had done so if anyone wanted to look at it structurally it's pretty good i guess though in general um okay so i don't know if you have it on the slide uh jenny but the baseball diamond uh is an obviously an important question which is uh, what happens to that space? Is it okay to be relocated elsewhere? Is it sacrosanct and cannot be touched? <laughs> where, where uh, and if there's different opinions on it, that's okay. But curious to hear people's thoughts. On it. it is heavily used, so it would behoove us to put it to put it somewhere else if we're going to use that space. That's all. We wouldn't, that, stop, yeah. we wouldn't stop the, the we wouldn't stop the campus design for a baseball field, but okay, we would like to reconstruct it somewhere else uh, sure. because it's heavily used. Okay, the new That's... park is not going to include a ball field. If that's the only buildable space, we will build on the ball field. We can always, so, okay, based on that, we can assume that it can be relocated if, um, if y'all want, so, good, sorry, <laughs> my kids are running out. Uh, if y'all, if, if you all are interested at some point in an option where the baseball diamond stays, we can do that, especially if you have the parcel on the back, which is relatively large to play with, then that, that can always be uh, a consideration unless you would prefer to see it used as a, a, some other form of open space that's that serves more, uh, you know, more users. Well, the, um, ni the nice thing, I mean, I agree with Carolyn, it's not sacrosanct, but it really would be lovely to keep it because it is a draw, it brings everybody from all ages. There's, yeah. a, there's a path directly from the elementary school that goes right across, oh, you yeah. saw it, so yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. It is. Yeah, the, yeah. And also, I mean, for senior housing, if you can picture, say, a building up on that new that new parcel that fit, is looking down on the ball field and watching the kids play and stuff like that. It's just I, I just love that idea. If we can pull it off. I don't know that we have the wherewithal, but I just wanted to put that out there. Okay. Yeah. And then there's the brook itself which currently has a sort of natural, call it a riparian buffer with trees and plants and, and bushes. Um, but we, we should definitely continue to talk about that and how it should be um, treated, path, something like that. Some, some, if there's some form of programmatic interaction with the brook as a landscape feature that could, I think, strengthen the campus uh, or, you know, alternatively, it could be 
left alone and untouched and, and preserved in, in, in the way that it looks now? Uh, it's mostly junk, uh, sumac and junk trees. And what we're going to do is um, part of the Franklin Conservation District got a small grant. We're going to have Owen Wormser put in um, a meadow buffer there that would be much better, you know, deep roots and be effective for flooding. Um, and it would and have trained the highway crew to do maintenance along there to keep invasives out, that kind of thing. Oh, okay. So you're going to do something of a landscape restoration along the, the banks? Yes. Something well, more natural, less invasive species. It's, it would be more effective for flooding and it would be much more attractive to look at it. It's good for pollinators, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, it basically get rid of sumac and the invasive stuff that's there right now. Yeah. So with our scope, you know, we're, we're really focused on the parking access, placement of buildings, placemaking internally. Uh, in terms of the brook, we're, we're also interested in that, maybe secondary to those other things. But let's, you know, we, we just want to make sure that our diagrams in the end reflect what, what your intentionality is with, with that space. So we can uh, keep, we can keep that conversation alive as well. You know, Luke, I think, you know, one important thing, you know, the library, once again, that parking is sort of set in stone, but when you look at the other, the other spaces, I know behind the police station, there's limited parking in front of town hall behind the police station. I know when, when people do go to the ball field, there's never enough parking. And so I think the plan is we'd really like to try and consolidate parking so we don't have, you know, blacktop all over the place. Yes. So Thank I think that's that. really yeah. important. And plus we did, you know, there's, there's a consideration of, of the possible doing solar canopies for parking, which would be great as well. I mean, certainly for senior housing instead of garages, you know, to, you know, be. Um, that's, that's great. Yeah. And maybe it's the site is just big enough that you would need more than one parking lot. So maybe it's two or maybe at the most three, but certainly shared parking between the facilities mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I had a question about that um, with regard to the parking space behind the, um, the Catholic church. Um, it's, it's almost adjacent to the back of the library lot. So I'm wondering whether this 20, is it 27 spaces that are required for the library, whether they all need to be um, in front of the library or south of the library, yeah. or whether well, handicapped Frank, accessible spaces could be there and some other spaces could be in the lot behind it. Hey, Greg, just just to let you know that the library, you know, that's that's sort of set in stone. And I'm sorry, I didn't say at the beginning of the meeting, but we're not really asking for a lot of public comment tonight. It's really just CCI. But you know, you're welcome to stay. We just we just we've got a limited time for the presentation. But thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Um... Let's see, what's next, Jenny? Yeah. So these were some of the ideas that we had discussed with just like Denise and Tim that we were aware of at the time, but now we know that there's like a third possible alternative for up here. Um, so well, I think a good, there's some good bullets here worth discussing, uh, which is, you know, we, we heard the number 35 to 40 units. Um, how set in stone is that, or is this more of a let's uh, keep an open mind and see how many units can fit and, and see highest and best use? Hey, guess what? You could fit 50. Uh, so let's go with that. Or is it more we want to keep it limited to 35 to 40? And, and also curious where those numbers initially came from. It's like the minimum amount that... Um we hope to finance or is eligible. Devel developers won't develop anything less than that amount, especially right now with the cost of building. Okay. It's, to put it so that's a minimum. That's more of a minimum than a maximum. Correct. Gotcha. We are also limited by 
at least we were limiting ourselves mentally by the height. Mm -hmm. We we are, do not want to build some big monster fortress. Oh, okay. For, can, can no you fortresses be of old people. <laughs> <laughs> Could you be specific on the height question? How many floors would you, do you want to max out at? So the town, I think, has a 35 foot height restriction um, in the planning bylaw. Is that right, Denise? Yes. Uh, yeah. But that, <laughs> so was, basically... that was, but that was based on, Tim, that uh, was because we had no um, fire trucks that would could do life safety rescue. But since then, um, South Deerfield has bought a ladder truck. So the planning board has been willing to or at least in the past, been willing to reconsider that. Right. And, I mean, it's it's, do, it's it's what's in the bylaw, but it doesn't mean we can't get a variance for it, depending we on all, what the project is. We can also, well, this is going to be a friendly 40B as well. So if it's not a life safety issue, obviously, if it's a life safety issue, you don't try to get a variance. But, um, but, but we had, when we talk, I think we want to stay, you know, we got some steeples there and things like that. So there is some yeah. height, yeah. but um, so, you know, and variation is nice, right? You <laughs> just want this big old block. Um, sure. And I'm sure you wouldn't do that anyway, but um, so, you know, the playing on the steeple and the, there's a lot of varied roof lines. I'm sure you noticed it and to stay in that, but we can go higher, but just not monolithic it was what we were hoping to avoid. Got you. you I, want to... I think what Lily is saying, thinking of is split level, like two two floors, and then maybe a three floor part. Well, I was thinking you know, three floors and maybe four floors, frankly. <laughs> but <laughs> whatever. Well, interesting, interesting landscape. Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, well, we can, uh, and we, of course, we'll revisit all these questions when we get to that point. But it, it's good to hear a little bit of color up front. Um, and I will say one other thing. Um, we've talked a lot about one bedroom, two bedroom. Our, our survey really showed that people want at least a bedroom and a den. And, and a lot of that is if your partner gets ill and you need some place to sleep and things like that. But the other thing that is not often uh, recognized yet is that a bath and a half is also very important um, because that half bath can be where your company uses the bathroom and your your medical requirements and and mm -hmm. uh, you know personal needs are not on display anyway so just put that out there too what, what about in terms of building typology it sounds like what we're talking about are apartments within a building, but there's also townhomes, you know, attached homes, row homes, things like that. Are we are you open to considering uh, things other than an apartment building or is it mostly an apartment building for the sake of uh, services for seniors is more is easier and that sort of uh, it's actually building. more more along the lines of who will be able to develop this for us without the taxpayer money and. I believe that that's so they did um, that's rural development Inc that we're working with they did Sanderson place in Sunderland and what they did there was they took the old farmhouse and they did convert that into a couple of apartments but then they built a, a large structure which they made look like a, a barn they have like a silo on it and stuff so they did a pretty good job I gotta say um, but that is the least costly to build because you can centralize all the HVAC, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So um, mm -hmm. we're more constrained by by their needs. So maybe now that I'm saying this out loud, we should make sure to get them in the conversation with you as well. And Lily, we actually have a slide on Sanderson Place just because yeah. that was also something that Denise had mentioned um during our so, site visit so so Lily so this is a developer with whom you have some sort of memorandum of understanding or something or nope, is it no nope. they just they're conversation? yeah lots of conversation and they've been helping us all along the way to okay. uh, find resources and um the woman who we've been working with used to be at the 
was Alyssa at FERCOG or Franklin County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority is no, our... she, was at the Fer... she was at the FERCOG and then she switched over to the Housing Authority. Okay, there we go. Thank you, Carol. So, so am I right? In, it, it sounds like the, in, the intention is to come up with a whole concept of the municipal campus, figure out which parts of the campus would be occupied by senior housing, parcelize that and dispose of the property to a spit to uh, preferably this developer, but some senior housing developer, or yeah. would it be like a land lease where you re retain ownership of the property? And that's a good question. Not entirely clear. Um, but the beauty of going with this developer is that they actually do become taxpayers. They're not a nonprofit. So we would be turning town land into actually a revenue generating part of the campus. So that's kind of a sweet way to go. <laughs> that's always a good thing. Yes. Um, which, of course, if you lease the land, you would also have a revenue stream from that. But uh, that may very but, well then, be, yeah. but when it comes to the implementation matrix at the very end, we should revisit that question, which is what's the what's the real plan for for uh, disposition versus leasing or something? I mean, disposing is obviously much more common. Um, but, you know, I at this stage, they, I think in Sunderland, that's what they did is they sold it to they sold it. Yeah. For $100. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, and, and the, frankly, most developers would obviously might walk away if, if they ask you to simply, if you ask them to simply lease the land for 35 years, they're going to want to own it. So but at any rate, um, that's good. I know we're, we're sort of running a little low on time. So Jenny, was there any other major points to hit? Um, oh, yeah, this is a good one. Yeah. So geothermal we understand you guys have big ambitions for the site um so could you guys talk about that a little more and what first of all what what the intention is second of all what research you've done and third of all your next steps on that and, and where you're at in the process and denise and denise and tim did allude to it a little bit but we just want to make yeah. sure we get it get it right Tim, do you want to talk about that since you worked on the grant? <laughs> sure. Um, so we we were hoping that by the end of March, we would have heard from the EERE division of DOE. Yeah. We've applied for a $375,000 a feasibility and design grant. And um, it would be on the campus site as you've delineated it. We didn't include the other piece of property that's potentially in play. The, the goal of that feasibility study would be to go, go out and drill all kinds of um, bore, test borings to assess the, the quality of the soil and the water content. The fact that it has a high water table is not a bad thing in geothermal. And it just becomes a question of which design would work best, whether it would be an open or a closed system, and also whether, in, whether they would put loops underneath uh, parking spaces and uh, and then um, we have been working with UMass uh, through Denise. I think you know, somebody arranged a a, a UMass uh, extension yeah. service uh, consultation. MA, MA, yeah, to, to MA Sweden, yeah, uh, to to like figure out the balance for all the buildings that we would be using. You know, uh, to maximize the efficiency of the system. And uh, depending on the outcome of that feasibility study, we would then be in for a second round of, you know, multi-million dollar construction grants. The feeling of the engineering firm we're working with, which is one of the DOE contractors that was sort of um, helping to tee up the program is that if we get the uh, initial grant, we're gonna get the construction grant. So we wanna make sure that whatever we design the buildings for use have to be compatible with de deriving some of their HVAC or a lot of their HVAC or all of their HVAC uh, capabilities from this, which might mean that we need, you know, some sort of independent um, system that could run in case of power outage, you know, uh, but that's, that's where it is. And the latest that we've heard is that probably this month we'll, we'll get a determination so if that doesn't come through, we don't have the money to do that. Okay. And that money will pay for the design of the system? You don't have a design now, right? 
We don't have a design. No, it would design the system based on the loads. They would come out and assess the loads of each building uh, yes. and do all of that work and then design uh, the underground system and, uh, you know, the access points for drawing, drawing the. Uh, yep. Yeah. I got you. OK, thanks. You know, Tim, I just want to add on to that. I think, you know, obviously it would go to the existing buildings, but when we're talking about, because you can do loops underneath parking lots, so that's that's really important. So, you know, hopefully we would hear that in time to be able to loop under the library parking lot, which will be the first one to go in, and then to then hopefully we would know what we were doing with the other parking lots, so we could take advantage of that. If not, it would just have to be the, you know, the, the borings, the vertical borings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if the, if, if the grant comes through, sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. If the grant comes through, um, the study will be done relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably a six month process. It's just you got to get the money and then you, you got to get the contract signed with the federal government. So those are the things that slow stuff down. Um, yeah. Yeah, the actual work. Uh, um, the engineer that we're working with is seems, you know, a fabulous engineer. He wrote a great application for the technical parts of this, so we were very impressed by it. Um, we've been working with, um, or I've been in contact with um, Williston uh, School and Smith College, and the, they're putting in systems and. So it would probably be a closed system, but it would be a combination of the vertical and the horizontal. And um, the key really is to have a really good advisor so that we can take on all the load um, calculations, you know, the library use, the town hall use, the senior housing, you know, that community center, the whole thing. So that's really the key is to make sure we have a good engineer advising us. All right, great, thank you. Thank you for that background. Um, okay, love the moving images, by the way, Jenny and Joe, I don't know who, I had who to was look responsible twice. for that. Like, I thought my eyes were fooling me. I'm like, oh, very <laughs> cool. <laughs> I had, I did not make those. Nope, 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 nope. just found them with Google search. That's cool. Mm -hmm. You pasted it really perfectly. Uh, yeah, thanks. Nice. <laughs> this is the right uh, cell, guys. PowerPoint. Um, all right. So, what's next? Oh yeah. So, concept planning. You know, obviously, we'll be getting started on that. Uh, the 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 intention there will work. Will again. It's all about iteration. Uh, this is your. This is Deerfield's plan. Uh, will we have ideas that that we can visualize, represent? We'll share it with you, get your feedback, make changes, uh, and, and we have check-in calls. Uh, we'll have check-in calls with you throughout the process to um, to make sure that we get those right. And we did have some precedent projects. Luke, do you want to, I know we're running short on time. Yeah, we, we can quickly run through them. Uh, I'll just okay. quickly present each of these. Um, oh, actually, no, these are good. Sorry, you're right. <laughs> Jenny, if you could, <laughs> you did this research. Uh, it's worth sharing, I think. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so I'll just quick, quickly speak. I think I found three. Um, I found three precedent projects that have done been done recently, studied or recent completed recently. Um, so this was Sharon Town Hall completed in 2022, and so this is actually they renovated part of an old building and then they added an extension, but maintained kind of like this old town feel with the architecture. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, in terms of sustainability, um, the building is electrified and um, there is an intent to install solar PV arrays in the future. Um, so I just thought it was like a, a cool project where it kind of shows how you can mix a variety of buildings um, to serve, you know, it can serve the public on one hand with this public meeting room, but then it also hosts the town offices, which I think is something that Deerfield might be looking into. Um, this is more of like a campus redesign. So Dedham has a, uh, they're doing a municipal campus redesign specifically for their 
um, public safety offices. So they're redeveloping their schoolhouse in, or an old schoolhouse into a combined town hall and senior center. Um, and this is a phased approach. So that was supposed to be done in 2017. Phase two was a major renovation and um, in addition to a town hall for a conversion to the police station. And then phase three is a renovation and expansion of the main fire station. Um, and so the project is supposed to be complete in total, the whole municipal campus by uh, 2025. And then third, this is Middleton Municipal Campus Center Master Plan. This is um, a really large parcel um, with 51 and a half acres total. Um, but they are redoing their fire station and um, police department and senior center because they all the old buildings needed to be renovated. So they decided to combine a few of these spaces into two larger buildings. Um, so they're going to have one public safety building, which includes the fire station and the police departments, and then a combined town hall and community center that includes municipal offices, municipal offices and public amenities, um, including a cafe, a kids play area, a fitness room, and a lounge. A fourth, uh, pre oh, uh, here's a fourth, but another precedent uh, might be Pembroke, Jenny. Okay. Um, we, we were in Pembroke this week, uh, and they're building a new community center, which is going to drain about four existing buildings of their program and consolidate it into one modern building, uh, which is similar, I think, because the town's going to then have those other properties to dispose of and, and, and flip them into tax earning properties. Um, so any lessons we learn there, we can share too. Yeah, I think a lot of towns, this is kind of like the trend where uh, towns are consolidating their buildings, especially where, you know, where it's not only convenient, but where it also fits the needs of the citizens. So if you have a, a senior center that's really close to a community um, community center, obviously you get more engagement from the seniors in that way, which is interesting and good. Um, so this is Sanderson Place. Uh, so this was completed in 2022. And I actually found a whole like article that came out um, last fall about like it had it featured interviews from like the architects and from the developers too, which I thought was pretty informative in terms of how this was funded, um, the stages of the development, how long the process took. So this could definitely be a good touch point. I'm sure Lily, as you know, um, you know, just very informative about the process, um, specifically regarding the senior housing there. Um, because it is a friendly 40B, it's age restricted. Um, there's 33 units, which is around what you you had expressed initially, the 35 to 40. Um, they're all fully wheel wheelchair accessible. Um, I did notice that the one bedroom size is a little bit smaller than what um, Denise had mentioned was desired, um, but that's something that we can definitely take into consideration when we start doing our concept model and we can figure out how much space, like how big do we want this building to be? How many units could we fit um, based on their different sizes? Another another thing that we did tour the um, Sanderson place, uh, some of us from the senior housing committee and the corridors are too narrow. You cannot get someone in a wheelchair going in one direction and somebody else coming in another direction. Um, really? Yes. Wow. Um, because it's not it's not um assisted living or anything like that. Okay. It's just, sure. But the corridors do need to be wider. And I understand why it happened. Also, the um the handicap shower was way too small. And um so I mean, just those are the, the a couple of things we noticed. We also noticed that there's um it, where that like silo is in the middle, there's a really light filled, lovely large room where the acoustics were god awful. So okay. I, I think that they were going to get um, um, panels to deal with that. But it, so there, we, we, you know, nothing is perfect and we can learn from what happened there. So that's why I share, I just throw that out when you're thinking of um, designing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
and then uh, yeah and then this was another um senior housing design in northampton which is a lot bigger um but this is going on in northampton so it's just to highlight that there are other projects there are other towns in the area that are um taking on developments like this And then finally, there's the zoning considerations. Um, and this is all in the central village residential district. So I just highlight the numbers up here from the zoning code of um, the minimum lot size, the frontage, the setbacks. So we'll have to keep those in mind when we're doing our preliminary designs and concepts. Um, and it's good that we talked about the maximum building height because it's noted as 35, but it's, it's good to know if we could get a variance on there there is a decision to go with a four-story building or to do um, a split level, as Carolyn mentioned earlier. Um, the Deerfield Academy um, dorms was giving a variance. So I know it's been given in the past. It's, Carolyn, it's can, can you also speak about, I think that we changed for all of, all this land is town owned. So does the 50, yeah. 50 foot frontage or 55 foot yes. frontage apply? Yeah, um, it should. Yeah. Okay. It's all municipal. Yeah. Right. So I, I just wanted to clarify for them that the yeah. minimum frontage, it's 50 feet or 55 feet, which is it, Denise? Oh, 50. It's 50. 50. Yeah, 50. we changed that. Yeah. Because it's okay. municipal land. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I mean, that was for municipal buildings. So, you know, the senior housing would not be considered a municipal building, even even though it's on municipal land. I mean, I think, uh, Annalie, you're muted. Um, certainly there are other discussions going on about uh, renovating and up, upscaling our town center. So. We do have a number of areas where we may be even wanting to entertain changing the zoning. So if there is something that um, seems prohibitive and we'd you know, rather not go for variances or whatnot, and it seems collaborative with other things that we're doing, then planning board certainly would want to consider that. I think when the fire department had gotten the, you know, the ladder truck, there was discussion of eliminating that building height um, minimum, you know, maximum. But yeah. what happened is there was a lot of pushback from people that didn't want really tall buildings built next to them. So um, we just or was left um, to do it on a per um, you know case basis. I think right. that was the impression um, that I yeah. had. I wasn't on the planning board at that point. Okay. Um, you know, Luke, I'm just going to check in with you because it is eight o'clock and I know, you know, we'd love all to be here till midnight. I mean, I know I want to, but <laughs> you guys would... yes. You may... And thank you for that. I, I did want to just respond to the last uh, point. Well, the, the, the zoning question. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Denise. I, we don't have much more to share tonight, Denise. So absolutely. But no, to I mean, zoning, it's fine. I just wanted to. To the zoning question, preliminary, not having put pen to paper yet, it seems like this site isn't so constrained that we're going to be pushed into a corner and needing to violate existing zoning. I, I, I don't know that, um, but there's sort of, there's space to play with here. And um, if you don't have an extremely like ambitious program of 35 units, if you have a three-story building, 35 units, your building footprint is something like 12 or 13,000 square feet. Um, I'm just sort of gaming it out in a very rough way, but it should be okay. But it, but who knows? If we get to the point where, well, you are constrained, you can only fit 25 units given the existing zoning, then we can talk about variances and stuff. Um, so, so yeah, absolutely. Let's, um, respecting everybody's time, we'll wrap up. We'll, uh, we look forward to speaking, Lily, with you and, and others on the 27th. Um, we Let's definitely broker a conversation with Berkshire. And if Lily, if you can lead that, that'd be great. And maybe we can just be in touch uh, uh, on email about that. 
Yeah. Uh, with her, I have a with to do, which is to email you their proposal, right? That's my to do. Yes, perfect. And then mm -hmm. with the public meeting, we will wait to hear from from you all on your preference, and mm -hmm. then we'll get back to you if it if it works, and 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 we'll make a plan. But we can just go back and forth. And you know, this stuff. Um, yeah, when we work it out, we'll work it out, and no need to to rush it. We we want to make sure that we get the right date and time. Mm -hmm. um so we so yeah we'll look we'll look to you on that and other than that you know it, it's been great to get to know each of you and and um maybe denise if we can circulate an email with everybody's addresses we'll we'll still plan to just go through you denise and tim but then if we can have everybody's email i just we might have specific questions that we that we wanted to, uh, uh you know drive towards certain people so it, sure it i can send you that i just i do have one last question so um, regardless of when we do the public meeting, uh, do you plan on having visual results for the first public meeting? Um, for the first, yeah, we'll have we'll have visuals similar to what we just shared with you in terms of what's on the site, and just so we can frame the mm -hmm. discussion with people. Because some people might say, "What are you talking?" About? We'll say, "This is what we're talking about." This specific purpose. So I think that we'll probably, right. and, and we and we might share some precedent images. We won't be sharing at the at least our intention is we won't be sharing any preliminary concepts at the first public meeting. We're because we're still listening to folks and trying to make sure that we understand what the community as a whole wants to achieve. Uh, not that we doubt uh, CCI. You guys are a great proxy for the community, but to really hear from people, we we might get some with some thoughts or some ideas or some inspiration that we hadn't gotten yet. So, which might uh, it sort of influence our thinking as we as we conceptualize. Okay, that sounds great. I, I you know I was just thinking about a combination of you know the postcards that we gave you, of you know I mean some people in town have seen that and they they understand what we're doing. A lot of people don't, so maybe it's you know collaborating with what you want to share and what we want to share and putting that together you know into one document or se separate documents. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay, good. All right. Any Thank other you. questions where you want to? It's been great. I, we really appreciate you guys taking the time and um, look forward to working with you all. This, this was great. a great presentation, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, that was excellent. Thank you so much. So select board, you have to close your meeting. I make and a I motion will, to adjourn. I will second that. Was there okay. any session? CCI? everyone right? yes <laughs> okay great thanks so much luke everyone thanks, and, uh, thank you guys thank you. i'll be in touch bye -bye. Thank you. excellent thanks bye, -bye. bye.